All right. This is the workspace, right? This is just some of it. Just so you know where I'm at with it. It's not, it's no small business. Now, these are going out the door right here. You really can't see them. But these is going out the door right here. They're going to Canada, actually. You know, told you I got a, got a, actually one man and woman sweatshop. My fiance does all the tags for me. So one man and woman sweatshop. Okay. This is the one I, I pumped out last night. I was watching a little movie and, uh, I felt these colors. I don't know where they came from, but I felt these colors when I saw them. So I went with them. And like I said, my color schemes ain't nothing to play with. Your grandma can make this, but her colorways ain't going to match the new J's. It's going to hit the street. That's what I'm saying. See, and these are just a, just a couple. And here's a nice little headband, for one piece. I mean, it's saying, you know, this is some, you go to a store, you see these, you're going to think they, they were done on the machine. You would never think they were done by, by hand, especially not by a six foot seven black African American uh, MMA fighter uh, with tattoos of myself. Not your average crocheter. People, when they hear about it, they always say, like, oh, like that was a good gimmick. Like, it's great that you do it for now. I've been doing this longer than I've, I've been fighting, man. Like, so, like, this is one, you know, because I drink beer and stuff, right? So I keep my bottle caps. Creativity is key. And I use those as the buttons. This is a nice little ponytail joint. You know, you got a ponytail. We got you. Even looking at the buttons, you know, we got the buttons all the way down to the whites. We got the dad hats we're finishing right now. We got all the, all my beer caps. You know, this is the supply shop right here. It's all full of full of donate hats. We're gonna donate, and then some more scarves and hats down here that I made. So I'm like a one man sweatshop out here. I've been doing it for ten years now. You know, ten years of doing mixed martial arts. Look what it does to some guys. You know, so I've been doing it for ten years and just learning how to perfect my stitches and figure out different stitches from stitches. And when you're building stitches, how's that gonna look? And I think there's so dope that you can take a small like little skinny yarn and you can make a hat that somebody can keep for like 10 years and always have them put a story to it where'd you get it from well they don't make them anymore i got it from a crochet boss he was you know i bought it from his website and everything's personalized all the way down to my tag that's handwritten on the leather and it's all burnt in and I use buttons so i don't little i don't use the same buttons a lot you know, I just have a, a lot of belt buttons that I go through and I pick them for every hat. So at the time we were both brand new in the UFC, right? We both we were both coming off wins. We both we want to eat a little bit, you know. We got a contract to fulfill. We want some money. We're trying to eat a little bit. You know, he's a big scary dude. You know, I was on a rise myself and it, you know, it, I thought it'd be a good matchup. So, you know, I reached out to him just respectfully, like, bro, I think we should fight and get this money and it took him a minute, but once he realized that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, like, fight with him, and I was just trying to, hey, bro, let's, let's get some money. We're fighters. Let's fight, you know. Everything was all cool. He said I would look like the Walmart Derrick Lewis or something like that. I said, bro, you look like the Kmart Curtis Blades. What's up? Then ever since then, you know, I've just been on his, been on his side, bro. He, just, he came out to watch my fight. I went out to show him. Him support and then go how he wanted it to go. But, you know, it's all, it's all about the learning experience of the game. You know, I called out Andre Arlovsky, and, you know, I, I think I'm at that point in my career where I could start knocking those guys off. Um, but, you know, it, it's really anybody in that same territory or area that the UFC wants to wants to throw at me. I mean, it, it's, it could be anybody, man. Don't get, it, don't get it wrong, you know. It's never nothing personal, but, you know, I got a family to feed, so... You know, it can be anybody, for real, for real. Right now, they got me on a medical suspension, so I'm getting some things some, some looked at to make sure everything's 100%. So we're going to our next fight healthy. So um, I'm not even on the radar right now. We will be soon enough.